Hi, I'm Dr. Sirid. Today I want to speak to you about the peak material. We are using peak in Picobello since 2008, so we have quite a lot of experience with it. But I think in the field of dentistry, it is not used as much as it deserves and that is due to some wrong information that is circulating in our profession. So I hope that in this video I can show you the real potential of this material. Here in this pyramid you see different plastic materials. At the bottom uh, we have PMMA that we use for acrylic dentures and at the top we have this polyeta eta ketone, the peak material. What we also see in the, this pyramid diagram is that we can distinguish two groups of plastic materials. So we have on one side the amorphous group and on the other side the crystalline group. So peak is a crystalline material. What does that mean? There's a book published in 2012 by Kurz with a lot of information about PEAK if you are interested to have some more profound information. A new version is now published recently. So here you can see these two different stages. We have the amorphous group. It's like a pot of spaghetti of these kilometrical long chains and the other occupation, the crystalline occupation, has an order. On our next slide we can see that peak really is part of a bigger family of materials, the so-called polyaryl ether ketone, the PAEC. And inside this group we have different types. We actually only use the polyeta eta ketone, the peak group. Other uh, commercial names uh, use PEC and so on. But really believe me, the differences of these materials inside this PEC group are not very significant. These polymers were synthesized for the first time in the 1970s and were used first in aerospace industry due to the fact that there is no other material on the earth with such a good relation between fracture resistance and weight. On our next slide we resumed the most important characteristics of this material for us in dentistry. So it's very lightweight we already mentioned that. We have an extraordinary fracture resistance. It has an elasticity module similar to bone. It's biocompatible. If we look at the unfilled peak, we will speak about that later. It has no rest monomer. It has a very low water resorption. It is metal free. And it is only attacked by one substance, and that's sulfuric acid. So it's extremely resistant in the patient's mouth. And we have an ideal gliding between peak surfaces or peak zirconia surfaces. That's important if we make telescopic rehabilitations. So why is there such a big confusion in dentistry about this material if everything seems to be easy to understand? Well, that's because in dentistry the first appearance of peak were provisional parts for implants. So we have the healing cups, for example, we have provisional abutments and this all this in our mind was causing the effect oh that's a material for provisional use but that's absolutely wrong. What you also should understand is that these parts are produced 
in an, on an industrial scale by injection molding. So if we make a lot of parts in a special machine, we get parts with very precise results and they are very, very homogeneous. If you want to do a single part, like a framework for a bridge for the patient, so then we can't produce it on this industrial scale and we have to use injection molding machines we are accustomed or we have in, in the dental laboratory. And the melting point is so high, 340 degrees, and the crystalline structure is so delicate, so if we heat it up and cooling down the material during the injection process, so it suffers in these small machines. That's why we had the big breakthrough using this material in the dental laboratory when the cut cam technology started and when we could mill these materials out of dental disc. And so here you have this result, a structure accurately and precisely milled out of peak. And now let's see in the market, we have several providers for peak. Here we have a disc from Dental Direct. They show us the right tools to use and to work with it. And here is it. And this one, Dental Direct has three colors. A white color, a natural color, the unfilled peak, and here we have a, a pink color. And that is due to the about 10% of filling with metal oxides. Okay, so that's really a filled peak material. Also, we can say that a 10% quantity uh, is not changing the properties of the material. Another one here from Chuvora. Here a lot of explication, a lot of languages. And you see if we compare the, the color, okay, we have here this gingiva colored material and this material is really it has a more or less white shade and this is due to the filling with titanium dioxide. So these two discs cannot be used as an implant material. It, not, it doesn't have the same biocompatibility. So here we have another disc from Chuvora. Okay. This one. And here now you see this beige gray color. And this is the color of unfilled peak. With the, with the best biocompatibility. And we prefer this material. And recently, since about 2018, we use this one. It's from Jungmed and it's distributed by Silladent. And so here we have the disc, we have all the uh, medical device uh, registrations uh, uh, necessary. And you see this one also has this gray beige color. 
So this is an unfilled material and what we like is that we have here on the outer border um, the, the specifications and the lot number of the disc. So after milling we can always see what disc we were using. Okay, so we are comfortable with this one and that's what we are using. So and what we get out of these um, unfilled peak discs is these fully anatomical peak frameworks and this is uh, really the, the the heart of the sievert bridge. I want to explain you a characteristic of plastic materials everybody of us knows, but we are not really aware of the consequences in the use of peak or other plastic materials in dentistry. So here we have a plastic envelope of our laboratory screw for the sievert bridge. And as you are accustomed, you see, to open, in order to open it, we have here a notch. The same notch we have on the famous ketchup tube at McDonald's. And if, it's, if we can find it or if it's missing, so we are really unable to open it. It's a, it's a plastic, a very plastic is a very resistant material. But if you have the notch and we make some force, so we can open it. But what happens? It's not just breaking one millimeter or two, as we might be accustomed for metal materials. No, it's breaking all the way. So here we have, it's breaking all these five centi centimeters. But imagine that this envelope has a length of one kilometer. It will never stop independently of the size of the object. That's important. So, and the same happens to peak if we make a notch. You see here this image of a peak structure and here in this reason with this rare shape we have a fracture. So the mill surface and the fractured surface and it's about one centimeter and it started all over there with a notch. You see? So it's utmost important if you are working on a milled peak device you may not use rotating disc or similar tools because it could be possible that you are making a notch in your structure and then you have the possibility that this is the origin of a fracture of the structure and this is a point that's really avoidable and it does not happen with smooth surfaces. It's absolutely impossible to break a peak structure with smooth corners. We tried to simulate that, but if you, we simulate a notch, for example, with a disc, and we apply the same force, then we eventually can break it. And it breaks really rapidly like the envelope we saw before because if the fracture once started, it will not stop until it gets to the other edge of the body of our, of our milled uh, structure. I hope uh, it was a good resume for you, it was interesting and I really could show you the real potential of peak in dentistry to get it out of the corner being just a provisional
material. So thanks for watching. If it was interesting for you, I would appreciate if you give me a like. See you next time. Goodbye.